Okay, so today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install the latest TTS High Booster Supercharger Kit. Uh, this is using the new counterclockwise rotating Rotrex C3094. Uh, this is capable of giving us 18 pound of boost, so we can get some serious horsepower out of a high booster. So, first of all, you need to pull the engine, pull the top end off, fit a spacer under the barrel. This is on a Gen 2, so you fit a spacer under the barrel. Yeah, you can just see it there, two millimeters between there and there. This lowers the compression to around 9.7 to one. Uh, once you pop that in, stick yourself a set of ARP or uh, APE head studs and nuts, cometic head gasket, put it back together, get it back in the chassis. So that's the first port of call, get that done, get it out of the way. Um, this Gen 2, unfortunately, is one with um, anti-lock brakes. So we've got this unit in the way of what would be an even simpler job. So we lift this up a little bit and manipulate all the oil lines to uh, clear the air filter. It's only really the air filter that's in, in the way. And that's because the air filter sits back down here. So once you've moved this around, these pipes bend with your fingers. But if you know, you're not feeling strong, there's a nice US Pro tool which you can utilize to bend the pipes. This one's got to have to come down because this will be in the way of the tank, the fuel tank. So there's a little bit of work to do there. Um, the harness, the wiring harness comes down, comes down quite low, so we zip tie that up to the upper harness to get that out of the way of where the air filter goes, which is in there. As you can see now, we've got lots of room. And to improve that room even further, we take the breather box off with the reed valve in the top that uh, Gen 2 Suzuki's, Gen 3 Suzuki's have. And um, we've made our own, which is lower. So that's um, this part. So we put the reed valve back in there. We supply it with two can sink bolts and two cap heads. And as you can see, we've got one in here already. Dave, we can squeeze in there. Okay, so that gives us room for the air filter. When we fit the supercharger, the supercharger comes in as close as we can possibly get it. And to enable us to get it that close, we take the sprocket cover stroke slave cylinder, clutch slave cylinder mount off and we replace it with our own slave cylinder which um, the mounting has the slave cylinder built into it so that's this baby and you need to take the okay so you take the slave cylinder out the standard slave cylinder out and you take the spring off it and you take the oil seal off it and you fit it into our piston, which is this one, as you can see. And the, this piston is smaller and sits further back, enabling us to fit the whole unit in about 25 millimeters an inch further in. Um, to complement this, we have to reduce the clutch push rod down to 108 millimeters. That's quite an easy task. If you've got an angle grinder, just chop it and dress it up, put it back in at approximately 108 millimeters. This goes on here. So that enables us to get the supercharger in behind that, oh sorry, in front of that. Okay. So now we've got the slave cylinder on. We supply a new clutch cable. This goes all the way up to the master cylinder. That comes with the kit, so you get a new, new longer clutch cable, clutch um, hydraulic cable. Little P-clip, that comes with the kit as well, feeds it all the way back up here. So that gets the cable in the right place, sorry, the hose in the right place, uh, so it doesn't get in the way of anything further. On the new slave cylinder bracket, we've made a little bracket to suit the speedo sensor so that sits there 
picks up these points. They give you the speed you're going. So again, that's pretty straightforward. You get, you get this little bracket to go on and bolt it on. Um, then from there, the things you've got to look at doing before you start assembling, take your spark plugs out, re-gap them down to half a millimeter, 20 thousandths, not stop uh, the spark being blown out at high RPM. Take the top fuel injectors out, and Davey will give you a still of uh, what we do with these, but we call it decapping, and at the front of the injector, there is a disc with lots of tiny holes in. We grind that disc off, that leaves the pintle behind, and this enables these to flow over 100% more than what they do as stock. And this gives us all the fuel we need uh, to map right up to 400 horsepower. So it is a very neat solution. You haven't got to change fuel rails. You haven't got to change pressure regulators. You're not going to change anything here. Uh, we supply you with a new fuel pump with increased capacity. Uh, so you have to flip the tank upside down, pull the, pull the original pump out and fit the new pump. So we've got that assessed as well. Um, once you've done that, so you've got the injectors in, spark plugs back in. Um, the next thing to do is start looking at assembling the supercharger on here. So this is the original cover for the alternator. We've taken the alternator uh, stator out. Take the nut and bolt out of here. We use the, uh, the bolter washer, we take the bolter and washer out. Uh, we use the washer again, because it's nice hardened steel washer. And then when we assemble with our longer bolt, uh, holding the pulley on the outside of the crankcases as well, um, that comes in handy. Okay. So here's our new case. We've made a slight modification over the prototype. We've now got a boss just here. And this boss enables us to positively adjust the belt tension, knowing that it won't move once it's adjusted. If you, we found that when we were riding the bike hard and hitting the rev limiter and bounced off uh, the rev limiter, there was a tendency for the adjusting plate to slide that way, only thousandths of an inch, but the belt tension was dropping off. So now we've got a positive stop for the plate. So this is the production part. Um, now. This is the supercharger mounting plate. So you'll see that sits on there. Whoops, on there. And this gives us a belt adjustment. And now we've got the positive stop here. So that we can get the belt tension just right and adjust that and lock it up so it can't slide that way. It's got two nice big stainless bolts eight millimeter stainless bolts for this side. And two more six millimeter bolts for here. So the chance of it slipping is pretty remote, but we've covered it with belt and braces and made this positive stop. Okay, so. So we've got the windings and the ignition pickup put into the case. We've got our seals to stop oil coming out from the engine. And then we've got our dry spigot, which locates on here. This heat treated EN16 steel. When this is going together, make sure that this surface is free of grease and oil, and also this is free of grease and oil, because we're driving off that, there's no key, but because of the direction of travel, the bolt is likely to try and get tighter rather than loose. So we've got no issues with the drive coming loose. So we put that in there first, just wiggle that in. Obviously you've got to put your um, new gasket on, put a little bit of silicon on these two joints as per the factory manual. You've got your locating dowels, and then you, you put this on. Now, on putting this on, you, you've got to watch your fingers because that's a pretty powerful magnet, and that can take the tips of your fingers um, and give you a few blood blisters. So just take it easy on that. So we'll assemble that next, and 
Go from there.